I'm trying to train myself not to hate my conservative family because I know they're just different people with different lives, but it's so hard. Do you have any tips? Yeah, I do actually. I think ultimately remembering that they're you on their own journey is so important. Like they are their parents' kids. You are your parents' kids. We are all somebody's kids trying to live our true and authentic life. My parents are the rebels of their family. They rebelled against their family, okay, and started a life together. And according to the family, they're like the rebels, right? Their kids are rebellious. But according to my parents, I'm the rebel. And with every generation, we are only just someone's kids finding our own path. So remember that your parents, your family, they're somebody's kids trying to make their own way, just like you're someone's kid trying to make their own way. Ultimately, we're all just each other on a journey, trying to figure out our life, trying to figure out who we are, trying to figure out how to love ourselves, trying to figure out how to love other people. And it's difficult and it is definitely not without conflict. First, we'll have the conflicts within ourselves. Then we'll have the conflicts with people. We'll have the conflicts with what we think is true and how we use words. But mostly, we will continually feel conflict with what we know is true. And that is the key that is so hard for us to imagine that when we're dealing with the bubbles, in the, including the ones we live in or the quote ones we've created, we're really dealing with what we think is true and then we feel safe within that truth. My mom and dad created a bubble in a Catholic community, raised their kids with Catholic friends, raised their kids around good people and thought, I'm giving my kids the best life. And they did, for the most part, try their best to give us the best life. And it was really good. Unless you were one of the queer kids. Unless you were one of the rebellious kids kind of confusing if you were one of the whatever kids they tried their best but their their bubble that they created or joined this catholic bubble that was so perfect for them ended up being a living a living hell for some of their kids can you imagine when you have a kid you create this perfect little environment you're like this is the best i'm gonna love my kid more than anyone i'm gonna teach my kid that they're wonderful and beautiful and special the way they are and then your kid grows up and goes hey i don't like this environment you raised me in it actually didn't do, it wasn't good for me. That's pretty hurtful, right? That's pretty hurtful. That's pretty painful. That's pretty difficult. But that's what's going to happen every time we have babies, every time we raise kids. I love that I read your comments, guys, and you say, I want to have a baby to give them the love I never had. Are you also prepared for that baby to grow up and hate you for a while or not like the way you raised them? Because that's just probably going to happen. Or maybe not. Maybe you end up having the kid and you have a great relationship and it's like perfect. Great. But ultimately, we're raising real people with their own lives. We come from people with their own lives. The whole world around us is people with their own lives that are just as important as yours and mine. They're just doing it different. You know, you live and then you die. But in between those two things... There's so much good and so much happiness and so much love to be had, but there's also so much conflict and it comes from us. When we have problems with people, it's a problem we're having with ourselves. I don't like the way they are. They hurt my feelings. I wish they were different so I could get along with them. I am hurt by this person. This person is hurting me. It's always about us. Which is why, good news, the solution is also within you. I love my family. I love my family more than I love anyone. And I still have a really large boundary between how we interact because we believe in such different realities. And yet we can get along. But this is also why I say my ideal world wouldn't have conservatives or Trump voters or anti-LGBT people in it because in my ideal world, I wouldn't have to feel on edge or like my life was being threatened at every moment or that people who are around me were voting against my civil rights. You know? And some people hear that and think, oh my gosh, like you're saying like we should get rid of people? No, I'm saying in an ideal fantasy land, of course I would want to feel safe because it's always about feeling safe, right? But no one's guaranteed safety because no one is willing to actually recognize that we don't all feel safe the same way. So instead, you radically accept in a philosophy sense that the world is perfect the way it is because it's exactly how we evolved to be. The world is a reflection of us as a collective, right? As a whole. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, let's see. Comments say, man, life is so lit. Like the more sad shit that happens to me, ironically, the happier I get. Hey, that's suffering that you learn from. That's the key right there. You can let the harsh things in life hurt you or help you. Very thankful for all the mistakes and quotations my parents made raising me because they made me better. Ultimately, the right kind of suffering leads you to wisdom. Even though I think I'll die unwise, it definitely has given me moments of wisdom. And the wrong kind of suffering leads you to destruction. So again, even when it comes to suffering, you can't just like go cut off your arm and be like, I am suffering. Give me wisdom. No, you have to suffer in a wise way. Not only do you have to suffer in a wise way, but you have to see the wisdom in the suffering. Which is hard because we're not very wise. I certainly am not. So again, like you're sitting here like, why am I suffering in this way? And it's it's a weird like uh, chicken or egg. Did the wisdom come first or the suffering? Did the suffering have to come first before the wisdom? In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah, I'm sick of. 